Hello and thank you for joining me today and we're going to kick off this session by talking about cake. What cake do you like? Can you imagine a world with only Victoria sponge? It's quite sad, isn't it? Let's talk about cheesecake, the food of the ancient Greek Olympians. Back in 776 BC, there was a baker happily baking a cake when some random person said to them, I wonder what would happen if we shoved a load of old goat's cheese in that cake. It sounds pretty disgusting, right? But if that baker hadn't been curious enough to be brave and give it a go, we would never have invented the pure delight of cheesecake as we know it. The moral of the story is recognising that one way isn't the only way and that we need different backgrounds and opinions and life experience to be really and truly innovative, especially in the workplace. Hi, I'm Shani Danda. I'm a practitioner for inclusion across business, government, not-for-profit and wider society. I help organisations break barriers and interrogate inclusion into their business frameworks. My specialism is in disability inclusion and I'm named as one of the UK's most influential disabled people. We're living at a time when diversity and inclusion at work and in the rest of our lives are finally beginning to be taken seriously. Not only because they make workplaces more just, but because performance improves when we're surrounded by people who look and think differently from us. Yet for all the progress that we've made, we have such a long way to go towards creating workplaces that truly work for everyone. And one of the things that I've noticed from doing this work is that people often put diversity and inclusion together. They're really two very different things. And I love how Verna Myers defines it. She says diversity is being invited to the party and inclusion is being asked to dance. It makes sense, doesn't it? Diversity is speaking to the mix of different identities and cultures and experiences that individuals share. And some are common and some are obviously different from each other. But inclusion is a whole of the story. It's an action. It's about being intentional. It's really about building the kind of culture and environment, and especially if you're in a workplace, where people of every background can come and thrive and contribute and be seen. So let's look at disability inclusion in the workplace. Did you know 20% of the working population are disabled? And did you know eight out of 10 disabled people acquired their disability during their working life? Surprising, right? The chances are that disability is an issue that you will come across in your business or experience yourself. A UK study showed that 25% of employers are less likely to employ someone with a disability and 60% were concerned whether a disabled person could do the job. These statistics didn't come as a surprise to me as I have first-hand experience of how difficult it can be to gain employment when you experience disability. I had to learn this harsh life lesson at the age of 16 when I applied for over 100 jobs, but I was only successful in getting an interview when I removed any mention of my condition from my job applications. Unfortunately, my story is not uncommon. There are more than 1 million disabled people in the UK that can and want to work but are unemployed. And this is due to the attitudes and discrimination that they face throughout applying for jobs and even when they get into the workplace. So let's look at why the, the unemployment of disabled people is in fact a societal issue. It goes without saying that disabled people should have the same opportunities and job opportunities as everybody else. But it's simply not the case because on average, disabled people are more than twice as likely to be unemployed than non-disabled people. They apply for more than 60% jobs than non-disabled people. And when applying for jobs, only half of applications result in an interview 
compared with 69% for non-disabled applicants. We know that the disabled people face unavoidable extra costs of £583 per month as a result of living with an impairment or condition. And these additional costs mean disabled people have less money in their pocket than non-disabled people, or they simply go without. There couldn't be a clearer case of why businesses must make every effort to create employment opportunities for disabled people. Yet due to many myths, negative attitudes and bias, the group of people that make up the world's largest minority group are facing further inequality and the dial on disability inclusion is just not moving quick enough. Ample research has been carried out around disability and employment over the years, which conclude that disabled employees are in fact reliable. We take fewer days off, we take less sick leave, and we stay in jobs a lot longer than other workers. We're loyal. We're productive. Once in the right position with the correct support, we perform as well or better as any other employees. And we're affordable. Recruitment costs are lower due to less turnover. The majority of reasonable adjustments are low cost or cost nothing at all. For example, flexible working. And it's safe. We are no more likely to be injured at work than any other employees. And finally, we're good for business because we reflect the customers that we serve and people buy from ethical and purposeful businesses and people prefer to work for inclusive organisations. So don't get left behind. Increased diversity and inclusion is a competitive advantage for any organisation. This translates into making great business decisions, building your reputation, and attracting and retaining the best talent. There's a huge untapped talent pool ready and waiting for us to dive into. Good things will happen when we find ways to remove the barriers put in the way of people reaching their potential, regardless of whether they have a disability or not, that goes for everybody. So remember, every decision that we make can raise or lower barriers to participation in society. It's our collective responsibility to remove these barriers so those furthest from the jobs market are being provided with the necessary opportunities to get in and stay in work. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions right now, but if you are looking for support on disability inclusion, whatever stage you're at, feel free to connect with me through on-call speakers. And let's see how I might be able to help you. Thank you for joining me today. Over to you, Warwick.